Greetings subscribers and other curious persons. Welcome to another vlog inspired by the Goodreads Tuesday Talks group. This week's topic is, which is more important, characters or plot? Well, to a certain extent, they're the same thing. A book starts with a character in a situation, they react to changing events in ways that align with their character or are deliberate attempts to act out of character. And then further events happen and the book eventually ends with either them having won or lost, depending on the choices they made and the events that happen. So it's a dance of sorts. However, which of the two is leading can differ. For instance, romance novels. To ordinary average people with nothing particularly special about them end up falling in love because of an alien apocalypse that traps the two of them alone in a room. It's not really a romance novel despite the fact that it ends with them together, because the challenge puts them together, but romance is about the people, the why of their falling in love, the choices they make to overcome whatever psychological barriers there are to the two of them getting together. A book in which Two people sort of like each other at the start, are trapped together for ages and end up being a couple. It's the wrong kind of challenge. So in that, whilst it seems like the characters are more important, the plot is also a driver. It's potentially more important. There has to be something to stop them getting together which can be character or can be plot, but the characters alone don't do it. However, if we look at something where someone is in danger, like a fantasy novel. So we'll have a farm boy. We'll call him a nice heroic name like Simon and Simon's a farm boy, he's lived an average life, raiders attack his farm, steal his best friend, who once she's gone he realises he actually fancies. So with the farm burnt down, a concussion, and his girlfriend stolen away by raiders, he picks up a burnt bit of wood, sets off. The burnt bit of wood is just enough of a weapon that he can keep himself alive. He's got that special zing to him that makes him a hero rather than a bit part character. So unlike the average person, He's got enough grit to drag himself, stomach rumbling and concussion throbbing, after a wounded animal, beat it to death with the stick, eat it. And slowly he works himself up to having proper weapons. Maybe he's taken in by a criminal gang who turn out to be criminals but not evil. 
So they give him the training he needs and he's good at it because he's got the grit, he gets proper weapons, but he never really fits in because he's kind of a pious child. And so whilst he doesn't have an education and he doesn't have city ways, he prays in a rough, homespun kind of a way. And slowly over the course of the first book, he, he, um, he tracks his way to the Raiders only to discover the raiders are actually working for a duke who's trying to overthrow the kingdom. So he's rescued the girl, but he realizes that the problem is bigger than it seemed, but he's thankful to God at the end of the first book. Second book carries on fighting against the duke, but he discovers when he comes to confront the duke that the duke is actually doing it for a good reason. The king is corrupt, or the king is enthralled to a demon. So things change, and uh, well, this is a huge threat. What the duke has done is evil, but he was doing it for good means. So Simon, with his girlfriend and the resources of the Duke that are now sadly depleted because Simon has beaten them down in book three, set off. They fight through the obstacles. They get into the palace of the king. Simon faces the king in combat, drives his sword through the king's heart. And the king laughs in the way of end of third book, demon enhanced, evil villains and advances towards Simon with the sword still stuck through his heart, smashes Simon across the face. Simon is knocked backwards and then God destroys the king. It's not a very satisfying ending, is it? Plots, the events that happen, don't satisfy as much as the actions of character. We expect a book to revolve to an extent on the actions of the character. Whilst traditional Greek plays might suddenly have the deus ex machina, we don't like it anymore. So maybe if done right, God destroying the demon king would have worked because we've had Simon being pious and praying all the way through and so that was his prayer working or one of the other characters revealed that his piety changed them and so at the critical moment they prayed and God answered but imagine if we hadn't bothered with the piety at all if he was a simple boy who didn't really have any faith. If he got through on grit and willpower and self-esteem, but hadn't been praying all the time, how much less satisfying that would be. So, they are differently important because of what we expect. As you ask Herodotus or Aristotle, and Deus Ex Machina is probably going to be utterly fine. They're going to watch that. That fits their narrative structure. You show a modern reader a Greek tragedy, potentially reskinned so that it's about present day people in present day language rather than a script in Attic Greek. And they're going to find the Deus Ex Machina very unsatisfying because they want the ending to be about the character. They like a certain amount of reversal, but fundamentally the character has to have made a difference. Now, this isn't utterly completely true of everything. In take Raids the Lost Ark. Indiana Jones does nothing. Start of the film, the Nazis 
I'm going to get the arc, open the arc, and suffer the consequences of being unrighteous. End of the film, the Nazis have the arc, they open the arc, and suffer the consequences of being unrighteous. But it's an enjoyable film because it's fun. It thrills and spills. We like the character. We like the character so much that we don't care that they don't actually affect the plot. That it comes out the same at the end as it did at the beginning. So which is more important? The one that you want at that particular moment, potentially, or not which one it is, but how they're done. Do we like this character? Biography, potentially, is entirely character, even more than romance. We're interested in the person. Or war stories. Military science fiction. There are some readers of military science fiction who make a distinction between adventure stories during a time of war and military science fiction. Because what they're looking for isn't the noble captain of a battle cruiser who is a little bit worried about his family and has a second in command who has a different approach to things and the two of them are going to have to resolve it in certain ways. What they're looking for is battle cruisers facing off against battle cruisers, descriptions of how they move. So it's almost all plot. It's not about the characters so much as the characters are a convenient skin for something that acts in a tactical and strategic way and has a plausible degree of human error caused by stress. So character is very definitely secondary in certain types of military fiction. So there we go. Important is, as ever, an entirely subjective experience. Toodaloo.